Hello and welcome back. Alright, so I know that I've uh, been skipping a few weeks and I wanted to make a short tutorial, very short, five minutes if you haven't noticed. And it's on SAS, or rather SCSS, which is the version that I use. Now, the difference between SAS and SCSS is that SAS is something that actually gives a crap about what you do, whereas SCSS doesn't really care as much. <clears throat> now, uh, the first thing I want to cover is whether it's beneficial to use SAS or SCSS. If you're going to be uh, modifying a website, where you're going to have a lot of different uh, embeds inside your CSS. For instance, if you're going to target the div with inside of the div with inside of a div with inside of a div, and then right next to that you're going to do a div inside of a div, and it's, it's just a bunch of nesting tree limbs, then yes, you absolutely would love to use SCSS because the first thing that I'll show you what this does is it allows you to nest your own CSS. So what you'll see here is I have a main div port, right? And this is in, uh, this is, okay, this is straight up HTML even though it should be HAML. That's weird. Yeah, this should be HAML, but I guess I did this in straight up HTML. But as you can see, there's... Where is it? Okay, so you see port 2, and then you see port 1, and it's inside this big port, right? So if you actually look down in here, you'll see that I have port, and then I have a nested port 1, and then uh, here's port 2, and port 1 image, and that's, that's how I managed to do that, is I just kept it along the same space. And so long as it's at least two spaces in, it will see it as a nested tree and this will prevent you from having to retype tons and tons of definitions. Besides that, there's actually not that much difference between SCSS and CSS. The reason why a lot of people use it is for the fact that you can handle nested trees very, very well. Another reason that people use it is you have the ability to use functions. Okay, um, this is Free Code Camp Weather app, and it actually took me quite a bit of time to find this, but I can't really find anywhere where I actually use a function per se, but it does have functionality. For instance, in this one, I am actually changing the pixel size by adding the initial pixel to the additional pixels that I want to add. Now, I could have easily just done this a different way, but to be honest, I just wanted to do it this way whenever I wrote the application. And this allows you to multiply, divide, add, and subtract values in order to get the exact pixel or REM that you need for that specific property. Now, there are a ton of different functions on the SCSS website that you can definitely use. 
It's just I don't have a tendency to need to use them uh, because what I tend to build is either so very refined in detail already that I don't really need to extend that and try to use functions but you can not only use functions you can set up your own functions and as you can see here by our variable default you can set up variables inside of SCSS and all you need to do is use the dollar sign and then the name of your variable with a colon and the rest is like CSS and what that'll do is that will set up the variable to mean what you preset it and this is very useful if you don't want to write out the different compatibilities like for the Moz and the WebKit and the uh, MS different compatibilities this is very nice if you want to use this repeatedly and you have the same shared SCSS sheet across multiple different uh, CSS sheets and as you can see importing something is also very easy as well that is pretty much it uh, there's a few additional things but the most common thing you're going to be using SCSS for is just the nested value. And again, that's very select in that you pretty much only want to use it whenever you're building a big website. Uh, the initial page that I showed you was very big, but it wasn't very nested and I'll go ahead and go to popular because that was the most popular one that I've had yet and and as you can see um, this is nearly 600 this is nearly 362 lines of CSS now if I were to actually look at the amount of lines that I saved by using SCSS it comes out to about 390 so I actually saved myself from typing out 30 lines of code and if I had had more nested elements I would have probably saved myself from typing out a lot more I've had situations where I can type out 150 lines of CSS and it can translate into 300, 600 depending on how nested the page is. The more nested a page is, the more SCSS becomes useful. Now how do you compile it? Well it's actually really easy. Alright, so I had to switch uh, to a different recording software in order to record this um, because I needed to have a few things set into place. Uh, as you can see, this is the video that I'm uh, editing in the background and I only use Active Presenters because I just, it's a good application and it was given to me for free uh, to do courses on so I just use that for whenever I'm doing tutorials uh, for right now I'm using open broad open broadcaster uh, but as you can see the important thing here is that we have the example.css right here okay now in order to compile it you have to gem install sass of course and that normally is done whenever you actually install rails right now I'm just going to show you how to convert it it's really really simple there are two ways to convert it you have the manual convert which is dash dash s c s s and then you have watch now what watch does is while you're making changes to the CSS file it'll actually change 
the CSS file that it generates so that it it's like you manually converted it it just as you change the SCSS file or as you hit the save button rather it'll change the CSS file and this is really useful for if you don't want to manually convert it every single time and you're doing minute changes uh, SAS has a memory problem and if you let it go on for too long it'll lock up and crash and then you'll have a bunch of issues I, I've had days where I've worked on a CSS file for an entire day and I've actually had to restart SAS twice in order for it to work properly and that's why you have the dash dash watch method so that if you are doing those long projects you have the ability to stop your watching and continue on uh, after you make those big changes now what you'll see here is it will actually create two files not just the CSS file so we go sas dash dash scss and then you take the file that you want to convert and you put that one in first with the extension and then you put a colon and then you tell it what you want it to convert to and in this case we're converting to a CSS file so we do that and you don't see anything there but as you can see it created a map file and it created a CSS file the map file is for SAS to be able to find the CSS provided you are actually making changes to it so that is it that is definitely SAS um, I'll go ahead and say goodbye and see you next time